What's going on, guys? What's up, everybody? We are here. We are here to talk about some interesting things, but I think the main thing, one thing I've been going through recently is scheduling. Um, yeah, I didn't realize how important scheduling is, you know, especially as a new entrepreneur, um, you know, just looking at it from like the point of view of like a nine to five versus working as an entrepreneur going Mm -hmm. to your nine to five, you're always on a schedule. Right. And, um, that translates exactly over, um, to being an entrepreneur. And if you don't have a schedule, how are you going to be held accountable to getting stuff done? Exactly. So I want to talk to you, Marcus, about how like your schedule looks, how it looked like when you first started and how it looks now. And uh, if you just want to like touch on like where, where were you when you first started uh, reselling? Like how, how was your schedule? Did you My have a schedule one? then? Yeah, it was pretty much just whatever, you know, when I first got started, because I didn't even really understand the benefit of a schedule. And then I was also like, well, I started reselling because I didn't want a schedule. I wanted it to be flexible and I wanted to be able to just do it whenever I felt like it, you know. But then I realized if I ever expect to actually get somewhere with this, then a schedule is going to be the, probably one of the biggest things that I do. And so um, I started implementing a schedule when I started um, doing clothing. I started doing 15 a day, 14 a day rather. And um, I would wake up and I would do my photos and then I would jump right into um, my shipping and then i come back from shipping and then i would do my listing and then from there i would either go sourcing or i would either go sourcing depending on if i had inventory i would go sourcing um after i did my shipping and then i'd come back and then i'd list but if i had items i would just come back and i would get straight into doing my listings and then i would you know i'd probably be done around like one o'clock two o'clock something like that well then i started um implementing uh the bins so I would yeah. go to the bins once a week. So then I didn't need to source during the day. So mm-hmm. I just used that time to list more items. And that's when I jumped up to doing 30, 33 a day, something like that. And uh, the schedule still pretty much stayed the same from there. It's just those different time blocks took longer to do. Um, the biggest thing that I did change was I started doing all my shipping first. And uh, then I jumped into the photos and immediately into the listings after that. But the schedules pretty much stayed the same from uh from the the inception of it rather um i just didn't have to implement sourcing as much now that i do less items and i'm back to like a minimal type of schedule approach i wake up i do my shipping first uh then from there i do my photos and then i send those photos off to my lister but everything's still the same within my schedule except for the fact that i don't physically do my listings anymore and uh, it just depends on if I have listings ready to go in the draft bank, I'll do them while I'm at my storage unit or at my warehouse. Uh, I'll do those before I do my photos. Um, I'll launch my items. If I don't have them ready to go and I'm waiting on my list to get caught up, I'll do them at the nighttime, like around this time. So when I get off the call, I'll launch my listings uh, and then I'll be done for the day. But other than that, man, uh, the schedule keeps me regimented and on point. Yeah, I think uh, a time block schedule is almost better than like a to do list because I feel mm-hmm. like a to do list that's kind of like what I started out with, and you get kind of like overwhelmed with a to do list because you're like inching away at all these things that need to get done, and it's like yeah, you yeah. cross one by one off, and you're like oh, I got nine more things to do. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Where a schedule like a time block schedule, you're focused on usually like one task at Mm -hmm. that time or that hour. Um, When I first started, I was just listing 10 items a day. And you can usually do that nonchalantly. Like you can do that pretty Pretty easily. casually. So I didn't need a schedule, but I found out quick that if I was to do more listings, I needed to be able to figure out when am I going to do 30 listings? Am I going to do it in the morning or am I going to do it in the evening? You don't just like wake up, the day of and you're like oh i'll I'll fit the 30 in at four Mm. today you know it's like you gotta get it done and um you know like everything that's like efficient in life has a schedule like Mm -hmm. you gotta have it um it holds you accountable it may not look like you have a ton of things on your schedule 
but it's important that you just make progress doing those same things every day. Like I source on Mondays, same thing with Mm -hmm. you. And I like to keep that on Mondays as a part of my schedule because it keeps it regular. It keeps it, you know, consistent on that day. I know Mm -hmm. when I'm doing my sourcing and when I'm not. So like without a schedule, I can't really be consistent in my life. You know, Mm -hmm. I can't tell my wife, Hey, at three, uh, we'll go do this. And it's like, no, that's on my schedule. Or, you Mm -hmm. know, like I know when I can spend time with the family. I know when I'm working, you know, um, and I'll share my schedule here quickly, but I want to talk to you guys, um, in the chat. Like, do you have a schedule? Do you want a schedule? And if you have a schedule, why do you think it helps you in your day to day life, whether you're a reseller or you're any kind of business owner? Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's just so important to have it. Um, I recently had to make some tweaks to my schedule because I have other things going on and I needed to figure out, well, when is my time, you know, when am I at my best and at what time frame should I be doing my work? Um, like, like you, like when I wake up, the first thing that I'm doing other than like, you know, uh, read my 10 pages, read one page of the Bible, hang out with my wife for the short time that we do Mm -hmm. before the kids wake up. And then it's like about seven thirty, eight o'clock. I'm in the warehouse pulling and packing the orders. And then Mm -hmm. that gets me to about nine o'clock. And then from nine to 10 o'clock, it's put away items. And then it's, um, so put away because I have those stacks of clothes. So I try to knock out right. like 50 items to put away. And then I yeah. knock out uh, 25 sets of photos. So around 10 to 11 is when I'm done with eBay. And mm-hmm. then I jump on doing uh, like real real estate calls. Um, yeah. And then I have my lunch break at 12. So I don't eat breakfast. I just skip uh, breakfast. But um, I really like that. Because I, mm-hmm. I used to work on eBay all day long. All day. Because yeah. I gave myself the time. I was like, I'll do eBay all day because I gave myself all day. And there's yeah. a law called Parkinson's Law that like whatever you allow that time frame to get a task done, that's how long it's gonna take. Mm-hmm. You know? Like if you say it's gonna take thirty days to clean your house, it'll take thirty days. But if you yeah. give yourself one day to clean your house, It'll take one. It'll take one. Exactly. Um, So like I've been timing myself, giving myself two hours to do this. So it really Mm -hmm. like creates that urgency to get it done. Yeah. Um, That's the only way it can help me be consistent because I have ADHD too. Like, you know, my phone's going off, you know, screens are popping up and it's like, it's so hard to focus. Like just reading for me, if I don't have like my phone and you know, if it's quiet, I can read and, and know what mm-hmm. I read. But if I have the kids coming up, and, yeah. you know, the yeah. TV in the background, I can't concentrate. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why reading the Bible is like the absolute, you know, first thing I do. Um, well, usually here lately, it's been straight, straight wake up right into the, the Patreon morning call since I changed the time. But after the Patreon call, I'm straight into the Bible while while my mind's not racing away with all the things I got to do in the day. And then from there, it's home to the task. Yep, for sure. We all yeah. have different schedules. I just think it's important as a newer entrepreneur, a person maybe mm-hmm. just starting their reselling business to figure out like, what's a schedule? Like, do you, are you a morning person or are you a night owl? Like, right. Or you got to figure people that out. Exist. It's true. Yeah. There's people that love working till midnight. Mm-hmm. I can't. Um, I'm not a night owl, no, so I'm um, sleep. Yeah, yeah. F- oh, figure oh, out like what's gonna work for you because it's really gonna help you go to the next level. People are yep. also gonna take you much more seriously when you have a schedule. You know, yeah. people know you're at work. You're like you're at work. You're you're from yep. eight to five. You're doing your schedule. When you don't yep. have a schedule, people are like, oh yeah, he's a reseller. He he doesn't do nothing. His time doesn't matter. Yep. Just bother him anytime. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, it's like, I think once you start doing more in your resale business, like listings, sourcing, you got to formulate mm. how, what are the best days to source? What are the yeah. best days, time to take photos? Um, if you don't, you're going to have inconsistent results. So, right. And then it's like you mentioned earlier, like um, on Monday, I source, but I have a Tuesday schedule. I have a Wednesday schedule. I have a Thursday schedule and a Friday schedule. Like, all of these days look the look different from day to day 
but week to week, each one of those days stay the same. So like while the next day might not look the same as the day before, the following week will look exactly the same as the following yep. week. Yep. So I know when you, if you look at my schedule, I just want to share it real quick, but you brought up the same point that I was going to make. Mike, my, my schedule is not fancy. It's not mm -hmm. anything that's like, wow, there's so much going on. It's literally the same thing. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. You can see here. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing every day. It's uh, yeah. uh, Monday through Friday. So I like to reserve the weekends for the family. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that's why I work basically yeah. is for my family. So uh, Monday through Friday, it's the same, you know, seven yeah. o'clock, usually six to seven is, um, you know, prayer time. It's hang out with my mm -hmm. wife. Kids wake up seven at eight o'clock. So it's like our quiet yeah. time in the morning. Um, but yeah, so shipping photos, edit video from seven to 11 a.m. And then I have mm -hmm. my lunch break and then I have calls all in the evening and then the coaching call. And it's like yeah. the same thing every day. Um, yep. you know, other than like appointments, doctor appointments, things like right. that. Um, so, and then the, the color is when I'm at my best, everyone has mm -hmm. their time when they're at their best. Like everyone has about a three to five hours during the day when you're mentally, physically mm -hmm. at your best. For me, yeah. it's right when I wake up seven o'clock to about 11. After that, I start going into more of the, um, yeah more of the tasks that don't require as much creative thinking, like planning yeah. and vision and like writing a book, you know, things like that, new yeah. ideas. Yeah. And then as yeah. your day goes, like you don't want to be planning your future at 10 o'clock at night, unless you're like a yeah. night owl. But for me, right. I'm going to be the words that I write and type out won't make sense because my brain's going to be dead. So yep. you also got to figure out when you're at your best. W what time is that? Cause you're not at your best 10 hours a day. That doesn't exist. Not at all. Nope. You know, and if you try to do it, you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. But go, I'm, what I'm I suggest the same way as you, man. Yeah. The yeah. Same way as you. Exactly. And, and most of everyone has a Gmail account unless you're on AOL or MSN. Um, you know, everyone has a Gmail account, go to Google calendar, start time blocking some time off when you want to do your photos when you want to source and start figuring out. And then the best part is it's linked to your phone. So you get constant reminders like, okay, yeah. I need to take lunch now. I will stop. Yeah. And if you are disciplined to your schedule, that compounded over time, you're going to dominate everyone else who has no schedule. Even though it's yeah. not about dominating other people, it's just about, you know, making progress towards your goals. Simple That's schedule, right. nothing fancy. Um, but yeah, I wanted to lead. That was just something I was going through this whole week, like looking at mm -hmm. my schedule, figuring out and just really figuring out how it, why it's important because without it, I'm a mess. So, Sorry. Uh, five figure eBay seller says, Hey dude, hope all is going well. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Anyone has questions, just leave them in the comments. We are here for you guys. Um, Nita. Hey, what's Nita. Going on? How you doing? I'm a reseller. We're reselling. What's up? Hey, hey. Big Dre. Just finished sorting 500 DVDs, putting them in storage right now, going to buy a scanner to make it easier to list them this week. Yeah. Nice. Um, I think that's the way to go for listing media. Have you seen one yeah. of those scanners where it just... I've never seen one, but I've heard about them. So, uh, White Lighter. 30 listings just feels so impossible. I know it's not, but I'm not there. Yeah. That's when it comes into with that scheduling. Um, the best thing you could do is just time yourself while you're doing it. Figure out where your time's going. Maybe record yourself and see like if you're taking too many steps in the process. If you like got your ruler all the way over there, you're walking over here to, do, to your photo setup. Or after you take your item, what are you doing with it? Are you walking halfway across your setup to put it away? Um, I feel like all that stuff adds up. And then on top of that, if you actually move with intent to try to get it done, you can get it done. Uh, then selling similar off your own listings um, makes it a much, much quicker process. But if you're an everything seller, then it's kind of harder to do that. Yeah, it's the little things that add up to be the big time wasters, you know, like yeah. you just said it, like the ruler 
placement, if you're a clothing reseller and you take measurements, the ruler yeah. being five feet away from you versus one foot away from you, yep. that adds Total up. Difference. Uh, and then on top of that, similar, what are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what are you doing in between items? Or like you listing yeah. an item and then like checking a notification because that adds up too. Yeah. yeah. All those little things uh, compound and we just take them for granted because we're like, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. But if yeah. you're doing more than a couple listings a day and you're taking a bunch of photos, it does matter. You know, having yeah. the clothes stacked beside me versus being a couple feet further away mattered. Yeah. You know, um, the put away matters. So, um, you know, and then the selling similar, I think that, you know, a lot of people are like, I have to go create a new listing, create yep. it from scratch, fill out everything that right there is maybe a great way to learn. But after a while, you're yep. going to realize that it takes so long to create a whole new listing each time. Yep. It may right. not seem like a lot more, but it does add up if you're doing 30 listings a day. Yeah. Uh, ATL flippers, what's going on? How's the storage units? You guys are killing it. Uh, yeah. I'd flip that, Joe. What's up, Joe? <laughs> Joe, what's going yep. on? Heaven sent smoking. Sup, bro? What's, what's going up, bro? on, Adam? My schedule is I list when my wife and daughter go to sleep. That works. Well, that's what okay. you gotta do. As long as you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, e everyone that. It's like everyone can, that's the best part about schedules is we all have different lives. So just mm -hmm. work your schedule in and around your life. Yeah. Like the work life balance is kind of, as an entrepreneur, it's, it's a little bit silly to separate work and life, you know, and having a balance because I feel like when you're starting something big, like a resale business yeah. and you're trying to build something up, there, there really isn't a lot of balance and you're always yeah. going to be tested with new challenges. So yeah. like, I think it's just, will create a lot of frustration if you try to balance those two things, um, to start, you know, um, I think it's like the great deception, like, Oh yeah, I have a perfect, uh, balance. It's like, there, yeah, it's hard to have balance. Um, yep. you know, I think as balance is like, trying to have a comfortable, comfortable life. Um, yeah. and it just, it doesn't really exist. Like at least kingdom living, there is no comfort, you know, God's going to push right. you into places where you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. That's how you grow. Um, yep. Tracy says, what's up? How's it going? Tracy, hey, Tracy. big Dre. I'm lis listening, listening for, for a day right now. <laughs> um, because my back stock, usually only last two or three weeks at that mm. rate. I don't always find enough to maintain that rate when we go sourcing. Yeah. Same thing that I'm kind of going through yeah. right now. Me too. Um, I could find a bunch. I'm just trying to find stuff that meets my metrics. So got to list less. Especially in the day and age right now where you really got to focus on the quality versus quantity. Like if you can't find it better to yeah. not list that junk right. than to list it and now you have exactly. a store that's full of junk. Uh Tracy Donald. Uh I'm considering getting an eBay store. I have come up but I have to obtain a license to have an eBay store. No, you don't. Nope. No license. Yep. Just sign Unless up. you mean like a driver's license, maybe, but you don't need like a reseller's license or anything. No. Yeah, lots of good benefits that come with having a store, you know, yeah. uh, marketing tab, promotions. So it's definitely mm -hmm. worth the $7, the basic store. Um, yeah. Natalie says, hey, guys, uh, glad to see you. Make a make progress every day. But my sales are so slow. I sell mostly cashmere sweaters on Posh. I'm not on eBay for a reason. Last year was booming. This year is super slow. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like with Poshmark, the bigger your store is, the least you, the less you sell. Uh, I've only been on there for two months, so I'm not the expert or nothing like that. But uh, I don't know what your reason is, but I would try to get back on eBay. Um, but also, only selling cashmere sweaters is not going to be the best approach either. So you yeah, might like, want to diversify yeah. just a tiny bit. Yeah, especially with clothing, the seasonality, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. If you just sell jeans, you're going to have your months be 
September to March. And then yeah. after that, people are wearing shorts. Yep. So having a little diverse. And I love the marriage between Poshmark and eBay uh, so mm-hmm. far. Um, now he says schedule is working perfectly. Good to hear. Good to uh Delta's Curio says finally catching a live and said the replays love it appreciate you. Nice. Uh ATL flippers to too. Uh Delta's oh, nice. Curio. Uh I need to I need to have you get on the call in the morning so I can do your story view for you. 7 a.m. Oh, is that Central. uh Keenan? No. I'm not uh, sure. Maybe. <clears throat> I don't see. know the names with the names, you know what I mean? Unless no, I see you all the time. Someone else. Sorry, so, but yeah, yeah. good. Come, um, on, come on the call in the morning so I can give you your story view. ATL Flippers, what's up, bro? How y'all doing in the Lord? I'm doing good. You just got back Lord, from church. Man. Yeah, just literally left church right before right before this live. So uh, I've been doing the volunteering over in the youth uh, on Wednesdays, and I was just telling Bo before the call, like uh, there's some revival going on in nicaragua right now like six hundred fifty thousand mm. people out down there i'm um, getting prayed over for healing and deliverance and our church got to go down there i didn't get to go but it was awesome to hear the testimonies yeah i mean everything i do is for god and you know if you're new to the channel uh that's what i believe um yeah. but if you're not new to the channel you probably already know um yeah. but yeah it's it's it gives you like a sense of meaning and waking up is every day going to be perfect and easy. And my belief in the Lord, is it going to make my life easier? No, it's going to make me stronger. So when I do face difficulties, I know I can get through them. Um, and that's just kind of been my experience over the last few years is like without God and my source, I would have much more gray hair and I would definitely not be in the position where I'm at right now. 100%. 100%. Everything is an act of God, God telling me to do these things and saying, mm-hmm. do them, you know, yeah. instead of just wishing for miracles, agree. he's like, do it. <laughs> yep. It takes a little action. Linda. Uh, what's going on, Linda? Thank you for answering all my questions in a timely manner. Hey, thanks no, for being no here. Problem. We're here to answer your question. It doesn't yep. even need to be schedule related. It's yep. Okay. <laughs> Um, Kazi says, hello from Australia. First time I've caught hey. your live chat. Love those conversations. Wow. Welcome. Welcome to time in Australia. Yeah, right what now. time is it there? Welcome. It's the next day. It's, uh, yeah, two, it's tomorrow. two in the afternoon. <laughs> the next from day. From the future. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Good to see you. Uh, Mandy says, I'm working on steaming my items for tomorrow morning's photos. There you go. Yeah. Have you ever thought about steaming items? I mean. No, I mean, you know the answer to that. (laughs) (laughs) I ain't steaming nothing. (laughs) Yeah. I'm just, it's, uh, I guess if you were to run more of like a boutique store and you only maybe listed five items and those five items are amazing, then it's probably worth it. But I don't even do the fabric shaver on my items anymore. I mean, I don't even pick up stuff that would need it anymore. So, yeah, I saw my fabric shaver in the corner of the shop. It's just covered in spider webs. <laughs> yeah, um, so, I, I, I've yeah. never steamed anything, and I don't, I don't ever plan on it. Uh, I just list it the way it is. Yeah, because usually, I mean, we sell mall brand clothes, basic stuff, so they don't even really require it. Yeah, um, nothing special. D says, hello, second time watching you live. Where are you guys located? Welcome, D. I'm in Missouri. I'm in Portland, Oregon area. Uh, Tracy says, I work till I conk out. Source today from one to six. Now hanging out with you guys. Now going to list a few tonight just to eBay. I'm active probably five or six listings tonight. That's good. There you go. Mike in the house. Mike, what's, what's going, going on? on? Um, Mike says, I'm the absolute worst schedule maker in the entire history of schedule making. Hashtag mm. big facts. Lols. <laughs> hey, but only up from here. Yeah, you know what to do. Yeah. Little by little. You know, the, everyone thinks like, like I got to be a, a certain way to do 
to do it, it's like we all start at ground zero. You guys should have seen me four, five, six years ago. I had no schedule other than the one my W-2 job set for me. That was my schedule. Yeah. And then I learned, oh, if I want to have a good business, I need to hold myself accountable. Yeah. No one's going to set it for me. Um, the ATL flipper says storage units are getting more crazy over here. I am blown away. Yeah. I'm yeah. Bad, man. <laughs> it is crazy. I think with the growth of reselling in general, you're just seeing more people bidding up yeah. units and they just don't know what they're doing. And yeah. scary. Yeah, uh, big Jason, bro. Yeah. yeah, for sure. There's a lot out there. Yeah. Uh, Big Dre says, my wife actually does the listing and cross-listing. I focus on maintaining the storage unit inventory, sourcing, customer service, markdown, okay. sales, coupons, and dropping off orders to the post office. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, teamwork. You got to have teamwork, especially if you're yeah. working with you know your significant other. Um, there's couples in the group that just do really well. Like, yeah. um, like especially four hands at the bins is better than two. But yep. you, you're able to just to go through so much more. Um, yep. There's another couple in the group that one lady does the listing and the, the husband does the sourcing. You know, it's just a great yep. um, there's so many hats to wear in this business. And maybe, yep. you know, you don't like doing all of them. So maybe yep. your wife likes doing the accounting. Let her do yep. that. It's better than being a control freak and doing it all yourself. Yep. Uh, Linda wow, Linda, 20 sticker. bucks. Thank you, Sweet. Linda. Thank you, Linda. Linda. You're awesome. Stay uh, blessed. Big Dre says, my wife cross-listed 100 items to Posh and Mercari today. Nice. Where'd it go? What are you using to cross-list? Uh, Cassie says, I tend to go day-to-day, -day, but I'm sure a schedule would help me so much better. Currently yeah. listen, listening while getting a week's worth of photos done. Thanks for the there great you company. You are welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate you. <laughs> Tracy says, I meant business license. Yeah, you don't. No, uh, Yeah, you don't need one. So I'm still a sole proprietor. So I just register with my social and that's Yeah, it. me too. Yep. Keep it simple. Maybe unless you had like employees or things like that, that's when that would be, you know, an LLC or S Corp might yeah. make sense. Natalie says, thank you very much for your answer. Appreciate you. Lisa says, Bo, you kind of look like Ed Norton, the actor. Have you heard of that before? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, guys, I used to wait tables for like 15 yeah. years. Everyone, I got uh, Ed Norton all the way to uh, the Lord of the Rings guy. So <laughs> I forgot his name. I could see that when Elijah Wood, I could mm -hmm. see that. You look more like him than Ed Norton. Yeah, Ed Norton. I haven't seen him in a movie in forever. Of course, yeah, I don't watch I watch TV. So, ah. mm. uh, Big Dre says, "Yeah, my store is dead around this time because I mostly sell summer clothing." Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, jeans, hoodies, and sweatshirts. Yeah. What's your number one category right now? Right now, um, well, for the whole year, it's still men's t-shirts. But right now, for mm. the month, it's men's hoodies and sweatshirts. Yeah. I'm like, I should yeah. check mine. I think it's jeans. Jeans is which number it was underwear. Two well, t shirts is number two, then jeans are three. So, okay. So, yeah. Um, underwear is 11, 1100, and then uh, jackets is a thousand. Nice. And then sweaters is 850. Women's mm. and men's jeans is 800. And this is for the month? Yeah. The last 31 days. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, Hoodies, t-shirts, all men's, uh, men's jeans, men's pants, and then women, no, men's casual button-downs is the fifth category. So my top five are all men's clothes. Yeah, you're not picking up women's anymore at all. I mean, I I do. I just don't pick up much. Um, it just doesn't sell for high, high amounts, you know what I mean? So, like, most of the women's stuff that I pick up sells for, like, 15 bucks. And so... I'm not really doing that because then they're just going to come in and lowball you anyway. So yeah, nine, nine stay bucks. away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Delta says I'll be awake. So I'll pop on. Thank you. All righty. Cool. Yep. Yeah. 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bobby, Bobby. What's going on? 
Bobby says, good evening. Good to see you, Bobby. Uh, Renee says, hello, you guys. I've been a top seller. Went whatnot. I don't know. I feel like a, I feel like what a beating I took, so I went back to listing my Radco Christmas, and I was so depressed over that whatnot, and boom, I sold four. Ornament. On eBay. Nice. Well, as long as you're selling, that's all that matters. Uh, yep. Whatnot is uh, kind of tough. You got to grow a following over there before you can grow. So, yeah, you're going to take a beating your first few weeks, probably. It just depends on how fast you grow over there. But once you get a few thousand followers, the money starts coming in. So just stick with it. Don't give up. Use items that you don't have a lot of money into to grow your following. Yeah, it's still reselling. It's just totally different than what I'm used yeah. to. Some people do great, and some people, it's a yeah. whole different. It's like going to the bins for the first time. You're like, okay, this is yeah, it's me. overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, amen for revival. Yes, amen. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, feeling good. Uh, Kazi says, "Hey, Bo, uh, I have been trying to get my hands on your book on Amazon, but it has been out of stock. Any plans for restocking? Not sure if it's an international." issue because i'm in australia i'll look at that um it's just a print on demand with amazon so i'll make sure that it's being shipped to international people um there has been a few people from the uk to make purchase but i'll i'll check after this and see what's going on but i appreciate that um the hard copy is best but if you wanted a pdf you can download that as well Though it's not as good. I'm just going to tell you straight up. Uh, Tracy says, I sell more on eBay. To me, Poshmark is like pulling teeth. I'm taking my men's items and moving them to eBay. Do you guys sell more women's than men's items on Posh, or is it even? I, I have more it. men's items in general, so <clears throat> I sell more men's on Posh. Um, let me check my sales. See, so I've sold... Just this month, I've sold four sixty-eight men's and two eighty women's. Yeah, this month I've sold eight oh five in men's and two twenty-three in women's. Yeah, and then so, like fourteen bucks in kids. Forty bucks in kids. Oh, I sold some kids. Uggs. Fourteen. But I have sixty-three thousand dollars of men's clothing listed on Poshmark right now, and thirty-one thousand in women's. So I'm just like much more men's stuff than women's in general. Yeah, so... 4,900 4, items. 119,000 men's and 76,000 women's. Yeah. Man, I thought I'd have... Well, I guess that makes sense because that storage unit had all men's clothing, all new yeah. men's clothing, so that, that actually makes sense. Yeah, all those socks and underwear, all men's. And then they're all mediums. Yeah. Well, that's the size I wear too, but I don't need nope. any. They're all, they're all gone. They're getting sold. So Yeah, I don't need tiny whities. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's like the theory of like all women shop on Poshmark, but, you know, I sell yeah. men's stuff all the time. So way more men's stuff than I do women's. Uh, Renee says $600 in three days. I'm back. eBay is green. Yeah, that's go. great. I mean, I'm. It's two twenty four. Let's see. On eBay, my last week has just been about the same. Like, I'm at four eleven today, and then like eighty on Poshmark today. So, um, nice. Yeah, I mean, it's been been about the same. I haven't broken five hundred in seven days though, which is usually uh, my target. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't. I haven't really been getting as high as I would like to, but I think that's part of the reason, uh, partly due to the fact that I'm listing 20 a day now. Um, so I'm not going to sell very, very much. Um, today I'm at 448. I broke 500 like a couple weeks ago. So yeah, it's been a while for me too. Last time I did 500 was on the fifth and I did 599 that day. Let me check. I got four open offers. That's pretty rare for this late. There you go, bro. Um, Accept them all. And uh, oh, the three, last time I hit a piece. Yeah. Actually, it was some shoes I bought retail or online arbitrage. I was wondering when those yeah. were going to move. There you go. Um, for all four of them. 
No, I wish. I uh, just I sold mm-hmm. one last week and then one this week. I listed them for eighty nine. Gotcha. They sold for seventy. I think I paid okay. twenty for them. Okay. Hey, and they shipped to my house. So there you go. Um. Wow. Two twenty four. Yeah. Two twenty four, and the next day in Australia. Yeah. Bobby says, got my first negative feedback on eBay. Mm. Uh, thank God eBay removed it. Nice. Okay, there you go. Good. Nice. I mean, I had two neutral feedbacks where they said, thank you. And I just I just yeah. request to remove, and they were gone in a few hours. But it's like, I don't think people really know how yeah. that all works. Have you heard of the new feedback rule that they're going to be implementing? No. Where, like, they, it's like a... Rockstar Flipper had a video about it, but they eBay came out and said that they're trying to do like relevant feedback, kind of like what Amazon does. Mm. So if you have like a negative feedback, it could be on the top of your profile for like months. If really? it's relevant. Yeah. Hmm. Changes coming to yeah. eBay. Yeah, I, haven't best, watched, I don't really watch many of that guy's videos, but after that daily refinement video, I was just like, yeah, I'm not watching this guy anymore. It just, I think ever since I watched that video, it just pops up on my thing. And I was like, All probably right. I keep getting his videos recommended, but I just keep scrolling past them. And then I found the three buttons where it says, don't recommend channel. I like that. Oh yeah. I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Definitely. like that one. Um, Renee says, uh, that's what God told me to rescue 3000 dogs. I did it. They all found good homes. That is awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. The um, animal That's shelters a lot of dogs. and stuff. It's like if people, if you really look into it, it's kind of a sick business. Yeah. Um, but that's awesome. You rescued some pups. Um, Tony says, I like the video. Tony. Sometimes Marcus will link likes to eBay sales. Do you do the same? Yeah. What yeah. do you say you're, you're saying? Well, I got I got yeah. it in with eBay. You got to like the video, you'll get a sell, but you had to do it for my watching. channel. They're yeah, watching. They're watching. Yeah, exactly. They are watching. <laughs> Only for your channel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Casey's laughing. Uh, ATL Flipper says, that's awesome. Jasmine and I oversee the children's and youth department at our church, and we love it. Nice. Kids are coming to Christ almost every week, and it's amazing. Yeah. We plan on doing missions trip next year. Nice. Hey, Where to? Let's go. Where did you go, Marcus? You went to DR, I went Dominican? to Columbia, 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 South America. Yeah. They're just really hungry for Jesus down there in the Hispanic culture, man. Um, I think, you know, the and I'm, I'm not really trying to be stereotypical, but for most of the Hispanic people that I meet, they're Catholic, right? So I think that, you know, when they find out that they've been misled their whole life, man, they, they really are on fire for, like, the truth. And so, like, that's my experience with them is they just really want to know Jesus. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Uh, like if you type into Google, how many religions are there? There's like over six, yeah, 7,000. So many. And, yeah. But they're all looking yeah. for that same thing, yep. right? The source. Yeah. And, yeah. um, but it's cool. Do you think you would ever do the missions trip again? Are you planning oh, another one? hundred percent. One thousand percent. Like, absolutely. Yeah, bro. It was so life changing, man. And now you have to vlog it for your new channel. Yeah. Well, if you don't, I would have vlogged. I would have vlogged it before, but it was inside of a prison, so I couldn't even. <laughs> we couldn't even bring phones in there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's. Uh, the pictures that I have on my channel were taken by prison guards. So, like the nice. the photos that I have on the video. If you guys have not watched the video and you want to check out what happened on the mission trip, there's a video on my second channel. You can check uh, the link in the description on my video, or mm-hmm. uh, there's um there's a link on my it, channel or I my could Instagram put it in or whatever. The, uh, I yeah. could put it in the description. But yeah, my walk with Christ, and then there's some numbers, yeah. right? Yeah, six, I don't know what two, the numbers seven. are though. Some yeah, six two four one or some random stuff. Check yeah, it but, out. Uh, I I love it. Um, and then Miss Lise says you got to be steaming your stuff. No, uh, I don't. If it if it's got wrinkles in it, it's it's just going up. Like the yeah. the thing with like linen, like if you wash linen and then dry it, it's all wrinkled. It's all oh, bad. Man. I've still sold some stuff wrinkled and shriveled up like cotton balls. Yeah, or like rayon. What's up, Ryan? Or uh, yeah. tinsel. Yeah, ain't working. Yeah, especially tinsel. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Bobby says, I honestly couldn't live one day without Jesus and the Holy Spirit in my life. Yes. That's right. 100%. Great revelation oh, there. God. Um, Big Dre says, I only paid 33 cents for each DVD. I'm putting in a storage right now. Got some complete series that are few nice. rare ones in a lot. Yeah. Yeah. When I sold DVDs, um, I would just try to go for those series or lotting them up because yeah. it's just like individual. It's tough because yep. yeah, other sellers are absolutely their profits are you know they'll especially undercut you. if you're yeah especially if you're charging shipping and other people are not then it's real difficult. Um, it's like selling postcards. Yeah, um, Chris says greetings from Kentucky. Good to hey, see you. Chris. What's going on? Uh, KL says, do you always create drafts or only when you will be planning on taking certain days off? I always create drafts. Yeah, I, I launch all my listings every day from the draft bank. From drafts, yep. Same here. Yep. I do it because the lister that I have, they aren't always great with their titles, um, so I have to go in and maybe plug in a few yeah. keywords. And when I do it in the bulk editor in the drafts, um, mm -hmm. I can just change all the titles right there. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, D says, do you guys have to do a lot of promoted listings to be able to get sales? Uh, my promoted listing sales are $101,000 of my $170,000 so far. So I wouldn't say that I have to, but if $100,000 of my sales wouldn't have been made due to me not promoting, then I would say it's a pretty huge part of my business. Yeah, let's see. Um, promoted listing sales, uh, $100,538 of my $150,000. So there you go. I think it's a pretty big part of our business because we sell basic ball brand clothing and simple stuff that thousands of people can find every day. We don't sell very much special rare stuff. Exactly. Um, not that we won't, we just don't have it. We don't find it all that often. So when we do find it, of course we, you know, we make those sales. But um, I'm not even promoting at ten percent anymore. Uh, the majority of my store is at ten percent. But the new items that I've been listing over the last two months have been getting promoted at eight percent, and they still sell. So um, yeah. I think as long as you're promoting something. Uh, you're going to be doing more than the people that aren't because there's a large chunk of people that don't promote anything yeah. on eBay. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, you'll stand out um, a little bit if you do. Yeah. Um, 67% of my total sales are promoted sale. So, yeah. yeah, just makes sense for my store right now. But as I bring in more and more items, like Marcus said, you mm -hmm. don't need to promote them as high or at all. Yeah. There's certain yeah, items that don't need a promotion for sure. Um, like, some items she, you absolutely need to. Like an item, what I would consider, like if an item had a hundred percent sell through rate, I would consider not promoting it because if it sells within yeah. three months without promotion, I'll, yep. I'll take it. Uh, yeah. Tracy says, thanks. You're welcome. Tracy. Big Dre says we're using Vendu. Once they said they take down sold listings on other platforms. Yep. That's yeah. What we use too. Yep. Vendu's awesome. Um, and eventually, from what I hear, they're going to be adding, you know, Mercari, Depop with also that auto delist yeah. feature. So I we'll can't see. Wait. I'm on Still standby waiting. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially with the $70 a month unlimited plan, it's, yeah. you don't need to it's pay the, the big code for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Renee says, me too. Hot. Flipper says, nah, you look more like Jeremy Renner. Man, now I gotta be looking up all these names, guys. <laughs> um, Jeremy Renner's the guy from uh, Arrow um, and Mission Impossible. And he's the guy that got his legs rolled over by the snow machine over the winter last year. Nice. That's good. I could see Jeremy Renner. I could definitely see that. Let me, I'll look it up later. <laughs> <laughs> uh junk monkey says howdy what's hey, going on what's going on rob Good to see you. uh renee says yes overwhelming yes i always pass, pass on, on medium i buy medium yeah because i am a medium so mm. i'm like yeah i'm just a normal guy if i wear it somebody else wears it those smaller jeans sell guys like them 32 32s fly off the shelf for me yep yeah um 
I mean, I even sold a 28 waist um, American Eagle jeans. So it's like, wow. Yeah, I, sold a 20 I mean, I wear like day. a 32. So yeah. um, Renee says, four ornaments. I am not sad anymore. Good. Sell them. Okay. There you go. Now's the time. Biff Buffo. Um, What's up, man? List, listing until midnight. I'm a former okay. chef, so I like the vampire schedule. Yeah. Yeah. That used to be my life. It used to be. I'd stay up to like nine o'clock yep. in the morning and then go to sleep till three and then be back at work by five. Yeah, I I always used to work the five PM to like twelve midnight yep. shift for waiting tables and yeah. yeah, you make more money at the dinner time, but it's like your schedule yeah. is like you're sleeping All in the way. Yeah. You're just so tired. Yep. Um Shane says, mentioned this before about HTML and descriptions and have been seeing an uptick in sales and positions. You stated that you didn't know, but I've just been experimenting with my old school surgeon skills. Yeah. Awesome. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, things that we used know to know about. about well, yeah. Th I mean, things that we used to have a theory about what we knew on what worked with like your description and item specifics. Yeah ebay has been changing so much lately without telling any of the sellers like yeah it's just like yeah, we have no clue what's going on like i always used to go like if the item specific is not there in the drop down menu don't put na don't put anything but now you know rachel strickland did a video a month ago where it's like oh you can mm. put anything in the <laughs> item specifics and they'll still come up searchable it's like yep. well that changes that there so. you go yep that's good. Yeah, I think we always should be experimenting with our stores. You know, we can't just be staying the same and expect it to work year after yeah, year. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Those uh, days are over with. Yeah, the old days of even when I first started was just so different. Um, yeah. I watched the newest Left Behind movie this morning. Is that the one with Nicolas Cage? I didn't like that one. Left Behind. I thought it was too Hollywood. Yeah, it was one with Nicolas Cage and all these secular actors and stuff. I'm like, come on, man. This ain't even legit. Oh, Left Behind with... Uh... It's like a movie from the 2000s, maybe. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, got, like, it's, got, it's got Nicolas Cage in it, man. Nicolas Cage was like... About movies, but it also got rated one and a half stars. Yeah, it was in 2014. It's got Nicholas uh, Cage, the actor will Nicholas always be Cage. Active. Yeah, Chad Michael Murray, Cassie Thompson. It was like not a good movie. Jordan Sparks. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. There's a lot of bad movies. Yeah, they're just not good. Yeah, so cheesy. Um, yeah. Shane says in code, you can even label your CSS formatting with keywords. Yeah, you know, if it's working for you, use it. Yeah, because um, I have no clue what you're talking about. So I'm. If you looked at I'm yeah, my just not for clothing. It's so basic. So, yeah. I'm uh, not but maybe for like for all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. I guess for like tech stuff, it would make sense where you need like a template and stuff. But uh, OEM guy says I've been doing online ministry for over four years now, and the same nice. time full time eBay. Nice, and God keeps blessing my business and spiritual he walk. Will. Keep going, so guys. Keep right, Jesus, always. Yeah, keep giving him glory, man, and you'll keep getting blessed, bro. Mm -hmm. No shame yeah, in serving absolutely. Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's the best thing. Like. What, there's another uh, it's a, another quote by John Gordon. It's like where he goes, you know, does our belief in God make our lives easier? No, but it makes us stronger. It's yeah, like, I love we that. We actually because, talked about that tonight. Yeah, it's like our life isn't easy. And, and I don't think mm. if you're living the easy life, that means you're you're not growing not, in comfort. Yeah, you know, yeah. like w whatever you believe, that's just personal development means that like we don't go to the gym to just hang out we go there to like yeah. push ourselves right yeah and um that's how i see life is like you're always yep. in the gym yep. mental gym <laughs> yeah. but uh lisa says is that Tim Tim? the author that's okay. the author of the book nice are you reading a book besides the bible right now uh i am it's by mark batterson and it's called um Man, I can't think of the name right now. Something about the lion. It's about Daniel in the lion, uh, in the lion's den. Um, nice. And it's really about just tackling 
tackling your uh, your goals in life and don't be uh, don't let the fear tell you to not do it just go after your dreams um mm-hmm. it's a faith-based book i don't read anything secular it's good i think yeah. uh reading is key yeah the only thing that's secular that i would read was like you know business books or like things like yeah. that like i'm not opposed but i'm not reading any fiction nothing like that <laughs> Yeah, I, it's crazy because I'll talk to people at our church and, you know, my wife and her all into, you know, reading and we read together. And, and we, when yeah. we talk about our hobbies with people, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm reading, uh, you know, Murder, She Wrote. Or it's like, no, nah, yeah. I don't James read Patterson. stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah, James Patterson. So it's I mean, yeah. there's no like, I guess, you know, if you want to do it for entertainment. But um, yeah. like when I sit down and read, I want to be able to pick up some tips and principles yeah. to uh, apply yeah. to my life. Yeah. But um D says you mentioned morning calls. What does that mean? Sorry, I'm a very new to this space. No, so the morning calls is what it's inside of Bo and I. We run a Patreon uh where we do uh coaching for reselling. Uh and my morning call just is inside that Patreon and Bo does an evening call. So that's that's what that means. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yep, morning call. Um Junk Monkey says eBay recommended. I promote it seven percent across the board when I downloaded my listings quality report. Yeah, I bet they it's, did. It's better than eighteen percent that I saw yeah. online. Yeah, <laughs> some Kenneth Cole jeans. It's like what? Yeah. Um, Renee says I don't promote. I think they take thirteen percent already from my vintage. Yes, I have to do vendor. It's a month to do vendor. Mm-hmm. Of month, I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. I know. Are you talking 13, about the eBay fees? Yeah, I know thirteen percent is a, uh, you know, it seems high, but you get on Poshmark and it's like twenty percent for whatever. So, um, you know, the thing about it is, is you got to pay to play. You know, so whether you're promoting or not, regardless, you're going to pay fees for selling on eBay because they're doing all the marketing for us. So, thanks, eBay. I think of it like this way, um, like if you're going to start a business, you got to have a marketing budget anyways, because mm-hmm. I don't, I've never heard of a business that doesn't market their business. I just, no. I, how, how, do you, how do you spread awareness? So I just see it as like, you know, instead of paying a brick and mortar rental every month, uh, mm-hmm. just, you know, kind of put some money aside to put the yeah. promotion on maybe some of your lower selling items. Yep. That's how my mindset is with it. Um, Biff Bobo Locker. says, Jeremy Renner. Her, hey, that's a good movie. Yeah. I he's just the, looked He's him the up. main character in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the bomber. Hey, Red, uh, how you doing? What's going on? Uh, Julie, good to see Julie. you, Julie. Hope you're doing well. Long time no see. Um, what is your opinion on store reset, sell similar th- every three days? Yeah, I, don't I don't do it. Nah. Number one, if I was to do that with my store, I'd be out of listings the first day I did it. So I'm not doing that. Second of all, I list on Vendu. So my items, well, I'm listing with Vendu for cross listing. So if I end and sell similar, all my links will be broken. So if I sell something, Vendu is not going to delist it. And then on top of that, third is all my listings are dated by a SKU or in, in there by a skew. Say for some reason I have the wrong skew on there or the date, you know, or something like that. I now have to find this item by date. So I got to go back in my emails and check the date that I listed, listed this item to find out where it could be. What items did I list on that same day? What were the number on those items? It's, it's sandwiched in between 875 and 890, you know, so yeah. that's why I don't do, I don't do it. And I know there's been talk in the past where people are like, look, look at my oh, traffic it's, it's the next day. Right now. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all the rage. Mm. Traffic. Yeah, I, I know there was a person that did an experiment and they ended and sold similar for, I don't know how long I think it was, it was minimum a week. I think they might've gone a month and they ended and sold similar. That's all they did. They didn't add new items to their store and their sales were down 80%. 80% for that time period that they ended in that, that that's all they did end and sell similar their sales were down 80%. So 
yeah will you get sales by ending and sales ending and selling similar yes it's you're going to make sales are you going to make as many sales as you could if you were just adding new items not even close mm -hmm. so if you want to do it on top of adding items by all means go ahead if your storage if, if your listings are not linked with vendu to where you need to have your your link to be delisted or if your items are not on a date based system go for it do what you gotta do you know i'm not gonna tell anyone not to do it i just cannot do it yeah me neither jared, jared. Oh, bro how sales good to see you he sold he sold six items on ebay i think is what he said in the discord nice that's good Congrats, talk about a, tur a turnaround of the century yeah um from Gl gloria vanderbilt to frank and eileen yeah good stuff six on ebay and one on posh so he's got seven going up congratulations nice. uh Jared. Renee says bartender for 30 years, but last 10 at hotels due to hours. Mm. Yeah, that's tough hours. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tracy says Kevin Sorbo. You guys are giving me all these names. Kevin Sorbo is from God's know. Not Dead. Do you ever seen God is Not Dead? Oh, yeah. He's in all those. Yeah, you know, he's the teacher. Uh, yeah. And uh, what Conan? The. I don't know. He's holding an axe so he might be i mean i could see that <laughs> uh tracy says there is a new one we're we talking new about the movie what? maybe 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 it's a new one that you look like someone his name is kurt cameron yeah but that's the older one the one with kurt cameron is older internet shopping the one with the one with nicholas cage is newer that's the 2014 one that's the one his she's name talking is about kurt cameron okay that's what i saw pulled up yeah. Um, Biff Baba says most movies are bad, like most clothes at the Goodwill. <laughs> yeah, you say that again, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shane says, I think they were talking about Kurt Cameron's movie. Yep. Mods hard at work. Classic. Nice. Don't know what you mm. mean there. Uh, do you have any mods? No. Oh. Well. Maybe they're miles on my end. I don't know if anybody put anything inappropriate in there, but if somebody did remove it, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, Paul, I do this. We do this live on Wednesday. It's a podcast between me and Bo. This is something that just started, and it's yeah. uh, just to show our faces that we're a united front. You know, chat um, it up with you guys. Flipping sports guy. Uh, yeah, it's something different, something new. Flipping sports. Okay. Internet shopping to flipping sports guys clear because Marcus new direction of not giving items away for discount prices. All his new found time. No, it's not. It's not that it's, uh, just, you know, Bo asked me if I wanted to do an additional thing. And since we're already business partners, I was like, yeah, bro, let's do it. You know? So literally it's almost 10 o'clock here. I'll be going straight to bed after this. It's not any extra time. It's actually, taking away from time yeah but, i yeah. mean it's more of just like an open dialogue to try and help people yeah. uh i wanted to t talk about the topic that i've been going through the last week is like scheduling yeah. and the importance of it but it's mainly just to kind of answer you guys' questions not really yeah. be so structured and just to really get to yeah. know you like you guys are just subscribed to his channel my channel we want to know yeah. who you are we want to grow with you um yeah. and we want to be able to just kind of help you guys with what we've failed in and what has helped us kind of get over the hump. But, yeah. um, but yeah, it's like, I don't just want to like talk at you. I want to have a long going conversation you. where like the videos I felt like we're talking at you, like a what sold video where going live is just, it's, I love it so much more than just editing a video and be like, all right, let's get, yeah. um, yeah, exactly um oh marilyn sorry uh marilyn um i used to to do the prison and jail ministry that was truly nice. a blessing for me i'm sure it was nice uh shane says when i was talking about css i was referring to the style of fonts and formatting however mm. you can name them as keywords that pat that pertain to what you're selling yeah shady but if search ai crawls bingo that's interesting. Um, 
God save the clothes. Love it. Hey, hey guys, finally got a line. your name. Change your name. You. I think it was, uh, what was your name before? I don't remember. Oh, but I know who you are. Uh, now. Internet shopping says, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't James, who you claim to be one of the goats, supports ending and relisting schism or just caught up in the story? I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know who you're referring to. I know you're talking about James, but I don't, don't get me wrong. I love James, but I, I don't know if he's one of the goats. I know that he's great at reselling uh, what he sells, right? He's got a big store. But as far as like the goats, um, I don't know who's the goat. I know tech is the goat at clothing, men's clothing. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I know James is good at what he does. Um, but I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a goat in my eyes of reselling. Just tech when it comes to men's clothing. But yes, he does end and resell or end and relist. He does like a thousand a day. Um, but his inventory is not based on. Um, date it's based on location and so he's got his custom SKU set um and i guess you know he's just got he's been doing this 22 years so i mean if if he knows where it's at he doesn't lose it hey keep doing your thing so there's a lot of people man that have been doing this forever and ebay tells you to end and sell similar they tell you to delist and relist so you know there's a lot of people that do it i just don't yeah I mean, you run your business. How? What works for you? Yeah. Do you internet shopping? Do you end in D list? Did D list and relist? Julie says thank you. Hey, appreciate you, Julie. Uh, Showgirl says if you just if you list junk, prices too high, bad picks, D list relist will not help you solve the problem. No, not at all. You can only D list and relist Old Navy so many times. Right. Um, Junk wants. Monkey says, I end, sell similar daily for stale items, added to new items. There's a trick to it. You have to add new pictures and edit the listing. I don't do it mm -hmm. for clothing very often. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because if you don't um, change the pictures, the pictures have code on it. Mm. That the same. So the listing, the AI still, or the algorithm still knows that it's the same item. Mm-hmm. Kevin yep. Sorbo's Hercules. I heard That's it all now. Now you're making up stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, no, I'm cool paying 13%. I am another confused about promoting. Is it a monthly charge or a charge when the item sells? It's just an item per item, and it's when the item sells. So if you, you can still sell a promoted item without the promotion fee. Um, if someone, someone finds it organically. Hmm. Uh, Tracy Donald says 2023 left behind. Kevin oh, Sorbo. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll check it check out. It out. I All definitely right, will you. check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, KL says, what would be your backup plan? Uh, B if eBay suspended your account. Poshmark. Poshmark, Mercari. Everywhere else but eBay. Yeah. I mean, there's multiple ways to resell. It's good to have multiple businesses just in case, yeah. you know, one goes out. That's why I'm getting into real estate, you know, yeah. not as a, an agent, but as a, a buyer. Um, I think it's just important to not put all your eggs in one basket and depend on yeah. one or two or even three sources of income. You got to have multiple. And especially when things are changing in the world today, you got to have, you know, uh, you got to insulate yourself and not just depend on right your job. Even who knows, you could be fired, and there you go. People get their value from their job, and then when they get fired, they go crazy. So um, that's why it's important to develop skills and become a person of value. So when you get fired, it could be the best thing that happens to you. So, right. um, but yeah, always be learning. Mandy says, I enjoy these Wednesday night chats. Hope you keep them. Yeah. Um, like I said, we just want to be able to talk with you guys. Um, maybe we'll have a topic. Maybe we won't. But really just want to see what you're all doing, how you're all doing in your business. Um, that's the key. You know, I'd re much rather invest my time with people 
that are committed to the channels, your channel, my channel, and just to be able to help answer any questions. Will the answer be 100% correct every time? No, because we're not, we're not like masters. And I think anyone who claims to be a master, you should run from those people. So it's like, I want to learn from you guys. I want to learn from what other people are doing. And um, just being able to learn from, you know, what other people are doing is the key and, you know, remaining humble as we grow is, is how you get better. You know, when you claim yeah. like, this is the only way it's like, you're going to get lost in the wind, you know? So, yeah. um, like, I, that's just how I see it. So, uh, Tracy says, I want to switch to a numeric skew system. Should I st- Starting numbering all listed items first or start with the newer listings and go back later and yeah. do all the second, listings. The second option, never start out trying to overwhelm yourself with the task of doing it all um, at one time. So just start out with a shelf, a box and some bags, add the listings you do today to the inventory system. And if you feel like it, go back and add some of the older items in there a little bit by a little bit. Cause I promise you, if you try to do it all in like a weekend, you're going to, you're never going to do anything else. You're going to quit reselling. So just add some to it. And then um, honestly, if your inventory is not that large, you can just leave your old inventory in the old system and just consolidate it down. So it dwindles down to nothing. Um, I listed about, I say I was at like 700 items when I started the SKU system. Then I went back and tried to implement all those 700 items into the new SKU system. And I got about 100 in and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave these all in totes till they all sell yeah. out. So that's still, a, I still got the same. Yeah, me too. I got um, four totes. <laughs> yeah. Jared says he wants to know how to recognize vintage Ralph Lauren shirts. Um, as far as like button ups. That's a whole deep dive, my friend. Yeah, a lot of it's going to be where it's made at um, because they have literally not changed anything about Mm -hmm. it. So you're just going to have to we could talk about it inside the uh, Patreon because, yeah, that's all. I mean, like made in Hong Kong, made in Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. um, Sometimes made in Sri Lanka. Yep. Uh, Land Shark Picker says, what's up? What's going on? Internet shopper says label in the stitching. Yeah. Uh, what's up? Internet shopping. Just keeping people honest. Biff Bafo says James might be an OG, but not the goat. Yeah, I've absolutely 100% say he's an OG because he's been in the game for a long time. Um, yeah. I don't think there's a goat right now. Um, there just isn't. Yeah. Everybody's trying to figure this thing out. And uh, that process has been working for me and would love to show you an example to try for one of your listings, Bo. Yeah, show, uh, you can contact me on Instagram. Let me know what you're you. talking about. What's going on, bro? I haven't seen you in decades. Lucky seven, 100%, you run your business the way it works for you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Delta's Curio says, end and relist eats up listings. Of course, they recommend it, so you need to buy a store mm-hmm. or pay for more listings. Yeah. Yep. Genius. Uh, Internet Shopping says, nope, I don't end and relist or delist. However, if I did, I know it takes about three minutes to delist and relist a few thousand items. The time it takes to do so with that many items equates to maybe two listings. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, like, the thing is, like, you know, it, it is, like, not that long of a process. But, like I said, man, I just think, me personally, it's a waste of my time to do it. Um even if I wasn't doing the listings the way that I am towards date base and inventory skew and all that stuff, I still probably wouldn't even do it. Cause I don't think that from my personal experience, when I used to do it, it didn't generate a bunch of sales. So like I used to do, I used to do all the stuff that everybody's doing. I used to do it all. Then I figured out what works for me and that's why I do what I do. But that's also why I tell you guys what I try on my channel and what I've done and what I've stopped doing. Cause you know, I want you guys to know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And if what I change to doesn't work, I'll tell you that. And then I'll go back to doing what I know to work. Yep. Trying new things is good. Yeah. Um, 
Marilyn says, do you send offers to watchers just during business hours or do you send them any time of the day or night? I'll send them 24 seven. Yeah. Whenever I see them, I send them. Yep. Cause also Me think too. of like as a buyer, you know, it's fresh in their mind. And as time goes yeah. by hours and hours, they're just getting less yeah. or maybe they've already found something different. So you want to be able to send them an offer as fast as possible. Yeah. Uh-oh. including getting new product up every day. Yeah. I'm at 553 for the day, Bo. Broke 500. Let's go. Nice. Baby. First time nice. in a few days. That's yeah. great. That's beautiful. Yeah. I think I'm at 480. So uh, that's great. I love it. Um, stay home to shop. Is it okay to include Thursday, Monday morning, Thursday through Monday morning in my what? I sold last weekend videos. Thursday through sure, Monday morning. I don't know. I don't know. Weekend video. Um, I guess. Look, this it's is the really thing. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you sold, when you sold it. Here's the time span. This is what sold. It doesn't have to be like a weekend. If people want to see what sold, it doesn't matter the time frame. Um, honestly, they just want the value of knowing the items to look out for. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get legalistic with it. I would just be like, "Hey, here's a what's up video, guys." You know. Yep, you do you. Landshark Picker says, "Focus on title structure, quality of the items, and competitive pricing." Love it. Yep. It's literally the Simple. basics. Got it. Got to master those. Um, but that's great. Internet shopping says the whole end and relist thing has lost a certain amount of valid validity due to the way. You can list with dynamic numbers in regard to promoted listings. Marcus is correct. It is pay to play. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I, uh, Great Deals Depot says, I relist and a couple times I have done my whole store. The views triple and so did the sales. It will also give you so many more offers than I've ever had. Everybody has their own experience with it. I'm glad it worked out for you. Um, as long as it works out, this is the thing try it and if it works continue to do it you know um if it doesn't work then don't do it yeah um i'm i'm glad that there are people out there that are being able to do this and they do see results because um i know the the experiments that i've saw and when i've done it myself it's it's not generating a whole bunch of stuff yeah, I mean, there's videos out there that show the proof of like, look at my impressions the next day, just like Land Sharp Picker yeah, is saying. Like Craig said, yep. Same. Yep. The, if the evidence is lining up, then use it as a strategy. I just know I can't for the same reason why Marcus said is it will yeah. just mess up my dates and everything yep. will just be out of whack. I'd rather just yeah. focus on picking up better items. Yeah. Um, Ryan says, have either of you tried eBay's new offsite ads? No. I have not. I just just started hearing about it. So I mean, yeah. I'm not into I'm not into like pay per click of any sort. And from what I gather from the offside ads is you have to pay for it to like be like on Google or something like that. And how much is that gonna cost? Like what's what's that looking like? So I'm cool yeah. with whatever eBay is gonna do. Uh internet shopping says to Lynn Chart Picker, given a ninety day window, they mostly end up the same on any particular item. There's a reason that when you look at sold listings, it goes for a 90 day time frame. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, if your item sits on the site for more than 90 days, it's dead. Move it along. Yeah. Uh, Jared says button ups for the Ralph Lauren. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger. Yep. Uh, Internet shopping says, okay, this was fun, but it's moving kind of slow and I'm really and I'm really kind of slowly, and I'm not sure y'all are ready for the kind of conversation I'd love to have. Best. Appreciate you. Known for coming, hanging out, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thanks time. for coming on. Uh, Jared says, "Is there a difference on the tags?" It's like I said before, it's going to usually be like the manufacturing location. Um, the tags have not changed much over the years, except for they've gotten instead of being blue and silver, it's going to like blue and yellow. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, you yeah, can you Google gotta, it though. 
the main thing when you're looking for vintage, if it's not like a t-shirt is you want to just know where it's made. You know, yeah. most items are made in Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, China nowadays. You know, those that's yeah. where most clothing, most items are made. So, uh, if it's anything else than that, then you can do more research off of that. Yeah. Um, uh, Renee says, before I got sick, I worked three different places and had a five-star Airbnb in the front of my house and eBay. It was all working. It's awesome. Um, I'm going as fast as I can by label. Uh, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Renee says, what is the goat? The goat is the greatest of all time. goats in my yard over here. Uh, Tracy says, awesome. Thanks, uh, Dixon, for the SKU system reply. You're welcome. No problem. Appreciate you guys. KL says, with eBay, when your listings end and become unsold, do you have to manually relist them again? No. They they automatically relist. Just sold a Filson bag. $60. Nice. There you go. Here. Did it break the $500? Yep. Well, if they pay. We'll see. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I'm like way off. All right. So, uh, uh, hustle man says, hello. Good to see oh, you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, that is. Is there a way to retract offers? Uh, no, uh, it says in certain circumstances, but I honestly don't know what those certain circumstances are. Uh, um, I've yeah. never, I've never tried. You can retract them if you submit an offer, but I don't know if you can delete an offer from that came in on your item. No, I don't think so. Um, Shane says, I, I got an email from eBay the other day saying that if I change shipping time to one versus my three, that I would increase sales. Yeah. Yeah, you will. Because remember eBay is trying to copy Amazon and Amazon's known for one day handling time. So so I do one day handling time on everything. Uh, Shane says, my question is that if they, if they by Saturday night and can't ship till Monday, do I get screwed on? No, you don't. No. It's business days. Cause yeah, the, if I sell something on Friday at one o'clock in the afternoon, it tells me to ship it on Monday. Yeah. You can set your cutoff time as well. If you do like same day shipping, uh, yeah. mine's 7am. Mine is 5am. Uh, right. So, uh, showgirl says, well, you can't change the ad. It's locked. What? Ad? Oh, your promotion. Hmm. I mean, if some, if somebody's made an offer on it, that's probably why it's locked red. Glad Appreciate to catch you live you. It. Yeah, buddy. Coming in with the five. Appreciate you. Renee says, I wasn't paying attention and a three offers came in at once and I didn't know. And one person got nervous, got nervous and paid full price. Nice. Thank it's you. always a win. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's sweet. Um, Renee says, what about eBay auction now? I don't do any auctions don't, personally. Don't, yeah, I don't do them for clothing. It's like, you're not going to make as much as you could make if you had buy it now and best offer. Uh, maybe for some special vintage items and you put like a reserve price, but no. Yeah. Um, Tracy says, do you think thrift with me to sell videos help with sales? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean help with sales? Um, like if you watch those videos, it depends. If you're watching someone that actually knows what they're talking about and actually like is buying good items, then it'll help you buy items that can sell. Um, but you got to remember, there's a lot of content creators out there that don't know what they're doing. Um, so just be mindful of who you watch and do your own research. Uh, if you find something that someone mentioned in the video, check comps, see if it meets your margins or your metrics. And if so, buy it. Yep. Uh, great deals depot. I had to try my sales started diving. I was doing it a long time ago and then stopped because I thought it was not helping anymore. But now I don't know why it rocks right now. Hey, as long as it's rocking, rock it out. You know? Uh, yeah. Stay home to shop says eBay reimburses me a hundred dollars per month for offsite ads because I'm top rated seller. Nice. Nice. Uh, Ryan money. says he'll be the Guinea pig for offsite ads. All right, let us know. 
yeah, let us know what happens, what it costs, and if it's worth it. Um, mm. Felipe says, hello, good to see you. What's up, Felipe? Do any guys invest in real estate? I do. Um, that's the goal. That's the goal is to buy yeah. properties. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but I, I don't make enough money right now for all that. Yep. It's I live just, in a one-bedroom uh, apartment. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the goal, Felipe. Uh, yeah. Tracy says, guys, I'm sorry. I have so many questions. How would you title a blazer or anything else? Missing size tag. That's a tough one. Hmm. A blazer Blazers. with missing a side tag, I would mm -hmm. I would measure it and then compare that to other listings that also meet those measurements and whatever that tag says is what I would use. I've had yeah. to do it before. I brought a wool polo Ralph Lauren um blazer home from Tennessee Benz and didn't didn't see a size tag in there and I measured it and it was like a forty four R or something like that. But that's about the easiest way to do it. Yep. It's tricky. Typically, but you don't want to pick important. that type of stuff up without a label because that's a that's a high dollar item. Yeah. Uh, Biff Boffo says, if you don't like an offer you sent, end the item before they can accept it. Yeah, there you go. The easy way around. Showgirl says, several label, several Ralph, RL Ralph labels Long. since the 60s. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan says, if you send an offer and one, <laughs> oh, yeah, so you, yeah, you revise it or end it. It's not yeah. that great, but it stops the offer. Yeah. Yep. John says, yes, Marcus, if you send an offer hey, for, say, a solid 18K watch, but mess up and put $18 instead of 18K, that's the one reason why a seller can retract an offer. Not sure. All out of okay. reasons. Okay. Yep, well, right. I've actually, I sent the $2 order offer on something way back in the day. <laughs> the person accepted it. And I was like, I did not mean to send you a $2 offer on these jeans, but I'm going to honor the yeah. sale. Yeah, Travis says, hey, guys, how do you handle false INADs? People will say it doesn't fit in the comments, but then list the reason for the return as item not described. You can challenge it. Yeah. Report the buyer. Me, me personally, I report the buyer by not refunding the original shipping and uh, mm -hmm. say in the comments that they're misusing the return policy and that it uh, doesn't fit return and usually it gets knocked off. Uh, Showgirl says, when you send an offer, the ad becomes locked. Right. That's correct. Yep. You're right. We're talking the same yep. language. Yep. Renee says, I think I'm with you. I had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, so did I. <laughs> Biff Bavo says, good content creators are as rare as grails at the thrift. Yeah, no. Have you seen my content? It sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's There's getting, not very many of them I mean, out there. getting more and more trying to tap into people's dopamine with yeah all these things i'm super um, basic yeah information Offsite ads is just what it sounds like offsite you like instead of on ebay like it's like on youtube or facebook or like yep. some other search engine Off the ad eBay. will pop up there yeah that's yep. not on ebay.com uh renee says that's how i retired at 53 real estate flipping and the lord yeah i mean let's go um yeah, if anyone wants to sell our house, I'll buy it. Okay. Side note. Uh, Shane says, I think she was talking about McThriftsy on... Oh, yeah. I've seen her videos pop up. Uh, she does a lot of what sold videos, I think. Okay. I've never I've heard of this person. McThriftsy, uh, I think just a Poshmark seller. Okay. Um, Showgirl says, you measure the garment to get the size. Yep. yep. Fit to pit. Uh, Ryan Tots Profit says, Tracy, there are new promotion where you pay eBay to show your ads on Google Shopping. Yeah. Yep. Be interesting. Um, Great Deals Depot says, how have sales been for the both of you? Uh, my sales are Same average. All year long. It's mm -hmm. literally, I average between 13500 and 16000 on eBay and then uh, 1800 a month on Poshmark for the last three months. Mm -hmm. Every month the same which is great uh tracy says okay thank you to ryan renee says list only melissa says what's up finally catching so live melissa. good to see you melissa john says marcus i got a fifty two hundred dollar offer on a fifty nine hundred dollar item should i take it i would yes 
Uh, Bobby says, I noticed I cannot block people on eBay these days. Put on the list. They must have changed that, too. Oh, I just did that really? yesterday. Yeah, you could just still be able to block them. I That's do like it with right. the $1 offers now. When I get a $1 yeah. offer. I have not gotten a $1, $1 offer, but I did get a $2 offer. Um, net sales per week. Um, my goal is two thousand, and my with eBay and Poshmark, 4, yeah, my, my with my, eBay and Poshmark, it's like eighteen hundred, two thousand. Net. My goal is four thousand for the week on eBay and whatever on Poshmark. I don't have a goal for Poshmark because I've only been on there for two weeks, so I don't have enough of an idea of what I should be making on there on a regular basis. You know what I mean? So as long as I'm hitting like two, two a month, I'm okay with that. Uh, Tom, Tom, what's going on? How was the bins? Um, good to see you, Tom. Stay home to shop. You guys are so inspirational. What's your guys monthly overhead costs? Um, Let's see. I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I pay my lister four hundred a month. I pay um, about one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars on inventory a month, and probably blanking on other stuff. But uh, it's usually like two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars a month, roughly yeah. rough estimate to keep this thing going. Yeah, I'm paying, so. um, I, and I need to do my numbers again. I haven't done my numbers in a while. Um, I'm paying five hundred a month for rent storage, like workspace, uh, like about a thousand dollars a month for inventory. Um, probably another hundred, hundred fifty for supplies over the month, and then probably my lister is my most largest expense right now because I'm paying them to cross my whole cross list my whole store on Poshmark, yeah. as well as doing my daily listing still. So I'm paying them like two hundred a month or a week. I mean, so. That's um, that adds up. So about yeah. twenty five hundred dollars somewhere around there. Yeah, it's uh something that you got to really figure out because if you don't know a ballpark estimate on what your expenses are, it's really tough to figure out if you're even making money yeah. doing this. Yeah, and so. I I had my numbers based off when I was doing ninety a day, and at that point I needed to sell three hundred eighty nine dollars a day to cover my bills. And I've gone down to 20 a day. So, and I only do that. I only list, uh, I take, I do eBay three days a week and I'm doing 60 a day now. Cause that gets me more than what I need for the whole week. So, yeah. uh, I'm like slash that in half. <laughs> so, yeah. um, eh, much cheaper yeah. now. Um, so it's getting late, but. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. If you are looking for maybe a little bit of accountability or just a little bit of help, we do offer 10 hours a week of coaching just like this for just a yeah. dollar a day. Or you could just try it seven days free. See if you even like it. Uh, yeah. We do have a Discord community, around 50 members growing their stores. You can find it linked down below. Um, you know, we have a clothing call. We have a morning call that Marcus does. I do the evening call. Yeah. We have a 100K call for people who are actually already doing six figures as a reseller. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're purpose driven. We're trying to just help people get to full time eBay, full time reselling. Um, there are people in the group that also want to just do this part time. That's fine. Yep. Um, but that's what gives us more fulfillment. YouTube's great. Reselling's great. But nothing is better than helping people, especially when they're yeah. trying to hit a certain goal. And exactly. um, you, know, you can learn from what, what we've made as mistakes and just really trying to help speed up the process of learning this whole thing. So, right. um, like I said, you could just try it out. No cost to you guys. Do you have any last parting words before we jump off? No, uh, just have a have a great weekend. Um, I know we're, not, we're just halfway through the week, but tomorrow's Thursday, and then there'll be one day after that. So I probably won't see you guys again because, uh, actually, I think I have a podcast tomorrow night with Good Game Grabs. So, yeah, nice. come see me over there tomorrow night. Friday video? Uh, yeah, there'll be a video on Friday. Yep. Okay. Yeah, go check out – well. Half the people are from your channel, but people who are watching from my channel, go check out Marcus's channel. We appreciate you guys. Keep your head up, and with a good attitude, you can overcome yep. 
anything. That's right. Keep up the good attitude. Keep on pushing. Love you guys. We'll talk soon. Bye.